Hi, Yanis. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. An absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, so congratulations on this really wonderful, fascinating film. Um, my first question would be, I mean, I guess we've just seen so many films, read so many books, so much that's depicted this period of history. Um, but yet with Christian's film, we've got even another new perspective on it. Um, I mean, of course, it sort of preempts um, the Second World War. So what was the appeal for you about adapting Robert Harris's novel? And why do you think it was important to tell this story right now? Well, first of all, like the, the Munich peace agreement is something that not many Germans know about. You know, it may be bigger in, in Great Britain because of Chamberlain as well, of course, but uh, we didn't know much about him and about the Munich agreement, or I didn't know. And I think uh, it's it goes for many Germans. But um, yeah, it was so great to read that script or to read the book at first and then see that and that what I love about Robert Harris and what he does is that most of the time it's very really hard for me to to have a real interest in history but then if I read the right story and I have a really interesting character so it's it's so much easier and I really get into I find 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 an interest in history and um I think it's 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 so great that it's being made and it has a lot to do with what we are living in now um, and and we could learn I think through this story we can learn about more about our society and um, politics in general yeah. and you know what kind of research or preparation did you have to do to play well because you weren't that familiar with the Munich agreement and with the Munich conference sorry um, and, and Christian really, you know, goes to town on recreating the era. So what was it like as well, perhaps having to think about costume and, and you know, your mannerisms and, and kind of really getting into the character? Yeah, um, it, 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 it was great. It was um, the, the, the best thing about this show was we would have kind of a website and everyone in the team could go on this website and there were so many informations about the people we would play the real life characters are fictional characters were based on and um yeah so much stuff. also i find these um colorized documentaries really interesting because they give you a different um understanding of that these things really happen because if you see them black and white, it's it's a different thing. Same goes for, you know, standing on a set and people wear Nazi uniforms. It gives you a different understanding. It does something to to you. And um, yeah, and then I mean, there were many books I could read also about the time in Germany during and after the First World War, which was really important for my character to, to see um, or to get an understanding what childhood felt back then and what then happened after the First World War through the Treaty of Versailles, that many things were taken, being taken from Germany. And then there was this guy telling all the young people and the people, well, look, Germany is so weak right now, but we have to make it strong again and great again. And um, we have to bring things back. And they believed in it. And Paul, so did Paul. And uh, it's so scary, but I really can understand him. And that was interesting because I think that's always the greatest thing about movies that we change perspectives and we get a different understanding for why people believed in certain things. And then uh, luckily, um, Paul finds a big. You know, quite drastically changes uh, his political view and um, does something against uh, what, yeah, against this regime. And, you know, what about working with your co stars? I mean, you have a brilliant, um, you know, on screen rapport with George Mackay, you know, as in, in seeing like how the, the friendship between the two of you kind of has to evolve, as you're saying, as Powell kind of changes his views. Um, but you're quite opposite in, in lots of ways in the ways you want to kind of resolve, you know, George's character is much more wanting to go through the system. You're wanting to go through the, the back door to get done whatever you want to get done. So, you know, what was it like you two working out the, how your characters would play out on screen and working alongside him? 
Well, first of all, it was important for me to to find a way where I f- would feel comfortable with with George, who I saw before I moved, and I was a big fan of what he was doing, and I, you know, was really excited about working with him. And I always thought that he's a great actor, and also he has this ability. You know, he every time he brings something to the screen which just makes me believe in something good, as pathetic as that may sound. He, he, and it's because he's a good man. And that's what I was learning when I uh, got to know him. And yeah, like you said, to, to, to being able to play this kind of friendship, we had to share some time together off set. And so we did and learned more about our similarities, our differences. And so we were able to learn more about Hugh and Paul and their their friendship, um, it was a big joy, it was great. And obviously you don't share that many scenes with Jeremy Irons, but what was it like, you know, having that one very intense, very pivotal scene um, with him as Chamberlain, um, and also just working alongside him on set, you know, on, uh, on set, you know considering what, what, what a legend he is. Yeah, 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 he is. And uh, I, I met him before many times, which was great, uh, before we did our, our scene together. And so we would meet ourselves in, uh, in the evening in the hotel. Uh, and he's just such a lovely guy. And I just, feel, I just felt comfortable being with him. I just felt good. And as, as, uh, that was the same thing for when we did the scene. There was no reason to be... Um, overwhelmed or you know not not being able to focus on uh on what we were doing he was really helpful he was really concentrated and um uh has this amazing voice and it's it was just a pleasure to work with him and what's really fascinating about the film is that in lots of ways it doesn't have like a lot of the drama that might have been you know in other periods of this, this this time in history but you know kind of the thriller aspects are drawn out um in what's been having to be done like you know behind the scenes so what do you think you know is so interesting about that and you know in some ways what chamberlain did was just avoid conflict and it was all about a lot of compromises which doesn't sound like you know the kind of heroic stories maybe we're used to hearing but there's something also incredible about what he was able to achieve so do you know what, what do you think people take away in that respect i think it's just it, it, it tells something about how difficult political decisions are um, um, the difficulties that come up if we have to deal with the political views or actions, if the, with the political actions of other countries which are concerning us in one way or the other and which go against what we believe in. How can you open up a conversation between two very different point of views and when should you draw a limit? And that's also a question the film asks, like, yeah, is it, is it right what he did? Is it not right? Um, but, but, but what you definitely can say is that England had one more year to build up an air force, right? And to take care of like building up uh, for, for the war that would come definitely. And, um, but I'm not a historic guy, so I can't say too much about it, but I think it, it says a lot about our time, yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you think that, yeah, there will be a lot of resonance there for people, you know, who perhaps are feeling disillusioned with politics, you know, just this idea that kind of activism and, you know, taking small steps that you can as an individual can make a difference. So do you think there's lots of elements of that which definitely play out in today's era? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, 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 it's really important to give the people that message that it's always worth uh, worth fighting for what you believe in. It's such, in the end, it's such a simple message, but it's so true. Like, uh, and then you will get to the point where it sometimes feels like you're not changing anything, but that must mean that you, or should mean that you should stop fighting for the right thing, right? And that what happens to Powell. And um, I think the end of this movie is in a way really beautiful, even though if, even though if we know what came afterwards, um, it makes me believe in that 
even a small group of people can change something. And there were people like this. There was a resistance to Hitler. And because of that, we are able of doing that movie and being reminded of that and, um, and hopefully bring something of that into our own, our own time. Another scene that really stood out for me is the one that you have with Ulrich as, as Hitler, which is obviously also very intense. So, you know, what was that scene like for you? And that must maybe felt like one of the most surreal, um, you know, kind of acting that out with, with, with the character playing Hitler. Yeah, it was really weird to be in one room with Hitler. Um, funny enough, my, my grandmother told us a story six years ago and she was actually meeting Hitler. Uh, when she was a child, because she was from the Sudetenland, you know, the part of Czechoslovakia, which was supposed to um, be given back to the Germans, so Hitler, so they could prevent the war. And um, and uh, Hitler kissed my grandmother's forehead because uh, they, her, her father was a famous poet, and they got an invitation. So they were all standing in line at his house, and he would kiss my grandmother grandmother's forehead and would say. We get you home as well and that's what the story is about right so it's so fascinating that she had this moment with hitler and then it's me eight years later having this uh, scene with him and it's weird like how things you know um go to go go into each other yeah mm -hmm. And what about, you know, to how do films like this play out perhaps differently in Germany than they might do in the UK, for the example? Do you think there's a different kind of sensitivity or like filming there, you know, something that's about this period of time? Or do you think that it's very much something that's kind of been addressed and it's in the past kind of thing? I would say for the Germans, it's like I said, the most important thing is that we learn more about this historical event, the special historical event and I would say for you um, it maybe gives you different perspectives on what Chamberlain did because what I heard it's the thing that he went off or the last thing he did was people thinking of him he was a coward and and, and, and he did many things wrong and um, the complexity of what he did is um, being talked of in this movie and maybe that gives you different perspectives I don't know, uh, perspective I don't know but um, yeah I think it, England and, and Germany will react in different ways because it's just not common sense to us what, what happened there. And can you just quickly tell me you know what you're working on next if you already started working on another film or another project? Yeah I did a movie which is called Last Song for Stella and it's about a Jewish girl who um, who we talked to the Nazis and to the Gestapo about other Jewish people and where they would hide and uh, in order to protect her own life. And it's a uh, fascinating story. It's a real, um, real person. You, she really existed. Um, and I was doing it last year and that was the only movie I did because after Munich, I said, I want to take a big break. And so I did. Mm. And Let's see what comes up next. Amazing. Um, well, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thanks so much for sharing all that with me. And best of luck with your next film as well. Thanks a lot. Love Thanks to speak to you, Yanis. Thanks so much. Cheers.